Now there was another blooper. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, August 25th. As long as you can hear me, Audio Setup has picked up your speakers. If for some reason you lose sound during the show, here's the Audio Setup Wizard. Collaborate will walk you through finding your speakers again. Everyone does have the mic privilege, so if when you're called on to speak, please use your hand raise button here so that we can get you on the mic. I'm going to be asking some polling questions and you vote there. Right now I'm using one of the pointers in this row. Chat defaults to the lower left part of the screen. Our biggest tip is to drag the chat someplace else on the screen and make the box long because chat flies by during our shows. Uh, when you do get on the mic, the talk button is, is here. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, August 25th. Our topic today is the Classroom 2.0 Live Farewell Celebration. It's an open mic session. Your co-moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us, and the closed captioning button is located right next to the audio setup wizard. Our special guests today are all of you. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will introduce Paula, who will facilitate for the day. Well, before I do that, let's have you do the poll questions with everyone, and then I'll take over from there. Sure. I wasn't quite sure of the order, so. Here is the live binder link for today. The tabs are on the left edge. They could be across the top or the right. There's a T for a table of contents, so you can see the table of contents as well. All the recordings are in the archives and resources page, which is also in the live binder. We always like to find out where in the world you're logging in from. Tammy and I are logging in from Southwest Arkansas. Peggy logs in from Phoenix, Arizona. Paula is logging in from New Orleans. Susie's logging in from Indianapolis. And we do have Italy today. It's always nice to see where everybody's logging in from. Here's our first poll question. What is your role in education? A, classroom teacher K-12, to and if so, please type your grade level in chat. B, librarian. C, technology specialist or coordinator. D, college university instructor, or E, other. And if E, also please type in the chat. And I'll publish those. 26% of those that voted said classroom teacher. Our second question, how many classroom 2.0 live shows have you attended? A, one to three shows, B, four to six shows, C, seven to ten shows, D, more than 10 shows, or E, this is my first show. Sixty-three percent voted D for this one. 
Our third question, how many Classroom 2.0 shows have you watched as video recordings? A, one to three shows, B, four to six shows, C, seven to ten shows, D, more than ten shows, E, haven't watched a recording yet. Hmm, I'm sorry. Cleared too soon. Please vote again. Okay, now I'll publish. Forty two percent said D. Now I'll turn the mic over to Peggy. It is so wonderful to have all of you here with us today. And it is kind of a bittersweet day, as uh, Carolyn mentioned earlier. But we want this to be a really fun celebration, because we've had so many great memories with all of you over the years. It's hard to believe that it's been nine and a half years since we first began. And that was back in 2009. So as you can see, we've had 366 webinars. And they have been such treasures. So thanks to all of you for everything you've done to contribute to Classroom 2.0 Live, whether as a presenter or a participant or a co-moderator. Um, we appreciate every one of you. I wanted to share just a few things in this little introductory part, just to give us a little refresher on things. And one of the things you may not be aware of is that we have all of the Animotos, and actually they're videos because they're not all Animotos, um, that captured the presenters for every year. And <clears throat> In these videos, what we do is take the images that have been created for each show, put them together in order of the shows for that year, and they go all the way from 2009 up through this past year, 2017. So if you want a quick trip down memory lane, go to that link when you get a chance and watch those videos. They're all about mm, maybe a little over two minutes long. And I think that you'll really enjoy refreshing your memory on those events. I also today want to give a huge shout out and thank you to our original founding co-hosts. We spent so many hours and years online together preparing for our shows to make them valuable for all of you. And that is Kim Case. Lorna Costantini and myself. And they were with us, I think, for at least four years. And so as you go back into the archives, you'll hear their voices and see the amazing contributions they made to Classroom 2.0 Live. We're thrilled that both Kim and Lorna are here with us today and look forward to having them take the mic a little later on in the show. So thank you to both of you. And I also want to give a big shout out to our current co-hosts who took over when Kim and Lorna transitioned on into other things in their lives. And that is Tammy Moore, who every single week provides closed captioning for all of us, and to Lori Moffat, who is our hostess with the mostest. She introduces every show. She manages all of the technical things behind the scenes. And uh, shares with all of us. She's done some presentations, but she has faithfully been here to host our shows since about 2013, I think. 
and to Paula Noggle, who joined us a little bit later as a co-host, but has been with us since the beginning. Paula has been an invaluable contributor to all of our shows, so thank you, Tammy, Lori, and Paula. And another really important thank you is our advisory team. We started this up a few years ago and asked for volunteers, for people who would be willing to come forward and help us plan and brainstorm for our shows. It's so important that we find great presenters for you that have topics and issues to share with all of us. So at every meeting, everyone would bring their ideas. They may be colleagues. They may be people that they saw present at conferences or at ed camps or in online webinars. And we would contact all of them. And every single one of these people spent their time contacting potential presenters to invite them to share with us. We couldn't have done this without you. So I want to say a huge thank you to Paula, to Patty Ruffing. Patty is the person behind the scenes who faithfully sends out our PD certificates every single week, and we are so appreciative of that. Thank you to Maureen Tomenes, to Kim Thomas, to Susie Higley, to Peg Bullock, to Wes Fryer, Jesse McKinley, Carolyn Stanley, and Melissa Getz. And you may not know Melissa because she's a very quiet, behind-the-scenes person, but a really important one because she prepares all of the images for us so that we can put them on our website, use them to promote the shows, and to share all the great things that are happening. So thank you to all of you. Another thing that Patty has been doing for us the last couple of years is creating a Symbolu web mix for all of our shows that year. This is really a, a labor of love and such a valuable thing. And I'm going to just do a quick jump into screen sharing because I'd like for you to see how amazing these things really are. <clears throat> If you haven't used Symbaloo, you really need to start using it because this is an example of what you can do with Symbaloo. And Patty added every single one of these shows as a tab in the Symbaloo. And whenever you click on one of them, it will open up in a new tab and take you directly to that show. So, for example, if I clicked on clicked on the show for flipping out with Flipgrid, this is what you would see. It would take you straight to the show where you can see the whole description of the show, who the presenters were. <clears throat> You'll be able to get an audio if you are one of those people who likes to maybe uh, listen to the show while you're out biking or walking, or the entire video, which is always uploaded to YouTube. And then below that, you'll see the link to the live binder and all of the links that were shared during the show. They may have been links shared by the presenters, or they may have been links that were added during the chat. And that's so valuable when all of you contribute in this chat, share your personal examples and links so that we can add them to the live binder and have a really rich resource for everyone. So. <clears throat> I hope that you'll take some time to check out the symbols that she has prepared. And with that, I'm going to um, stop sharing and take us back to our slides. I put in a slide for the last two years because it's so cool to see all of the great resources there. So this is the one for 2016. <clears throat> And now, I'm going to just quickly address the newbie question, even though 
I'm not a newbie, but I want to just chat just briefly about how Classroom 2O Live got started and how it has changed over the years. <clears throat> it really started with Steve Hargadon's Ning community, the Classroom 2.0 Ning community. And I think that there are at least 85,000 members in that community now. And Steve had been doing a, a Saturday uh, live conversation. And it wasn't really an interview, although he did tons of interviews over the years. But it was a conversation that invited anyone to join in and talk about anything that was on their mind, issues, uh, great discoveries, things like that. <clears throat> well, I decided that I would ask Steve if there was a way he could share topics in advance so that we could come prepared with some links or some ideas that we wanted to share. And as every good uh, manager administrator does, he said, well, I think that's a terrific idea. Why don't you do that? And I jumped at the chance. But I did ask him if I could bring along a couple of friends to help me organize it and get it going. And those two friends were Kim Case and Lorna Costantini. So we started our show in 2000, at the end of 2009. And one of the things we did that year, although sadly the wiki space is now gone, but the, you can find it in the archives. And I put that link in the live binder. But the very first show, we asked people to share 10 tools, their top 10 from 2008. And it's so much fun to see what we found awesome at that time and how many of them are actually gone now. Um, sad, but that is the nature of educational technology. But some of them are still here. So some of you may be using Digo. I'm sure some of you are still using Google Photos. See, some of these things have changed. We started doing our, our videos on One True Media. We did them on um, Ustream TV. We did them on Blip TV. And over the years, all of those disappeared along with all of the videos. So we've been trying to go back and add them into YouTube as we can. But so some of those earlier shows may not have video recordings in the archives, but they're there somewhere. We also use TweetDeck to share uh, tweets about upcoming shows and all the great things we've learned in the shows. And I bet some of you are using TweetDeck still um, to help you manage your personal and professional learning networks. So I just wanted to share that as a quick glimpse about what was happening then. And I'm sure that you all have some great things to share about things that are happening now and tools that you're using, maybe that you learned about on Classroom 2 Live. And I'm really hoping that you'll take the mic to do that. So now, I would like to welcome our fabulous uh, facilitator for our open mic shows, Paula Nagel, who keeps us on target and helps us know what to do when the time comes to raise your hand and take the mic. So thank you, Paula, for everything you've done for Classroom 2 Live, and take it away. Well, here we go. It has been a long and incredible experience. Um, I always have said that I wanted to be Peggy George when I grew up, even though she's not very much older than I am. Um, but I am so excited to be here and to facilitate for you. Uh, part of this will be definitely a trip down memory lane together as we think about the way things used to be and the way things are now. And so we will get started. Remember, for this open mic um, presentation, the easiest way for us to do it is if you look at the little hand symbol under the where you're pictured in the participants, um, then if you click on that and raise your hand, then I will call on the first person and 
after you've spoken, if you put your hand down, it will help us go, and then the next person. But if we get stuck, I will be calling on people, so be ready, be prepared. I just wanted to share a couple of funny bloopers with you before we get started, because we've had some funny things. I know the one that I always do is I forget to turn the mic on. <laughs> so I'm talking away, and all of a sudden I realize, whoops, nobody's hearing me. I remember joining a show one time when Kelly Hines was presenting, and she was literally sitting in a parking lot at a McDonald's where she lives in North Carolina because she was having very spotty Wi-Fi, and so she had to present from her car. Some of you might have been with us a couple, uh, last year when Shannon Miller was trying to present for us. She was in Belgium for a conference, which I think she was keynoting, and she had all sorts of uh, connection problems. She tried everything, and then I believe, Peggy, you relied on doing a recording of another uh, webinar that she had done. But we try, we, you know, we overcome, and we've all had our problems with Blackboard Collaborate as our platform, getting in and staying connected and things like that. So if you have any bloopers, we can talk about those, too. So our first my question is, when did you first start joining us for the weekly shows? Who'd like to take the mic and talk about your experience? And I know that we've got some brave people sitting in this audience ready to speak up. Raise your hand. All right, Tina, you will go first, followed by Kim T. Take it away. Hi, everyone. Um, the first time that I could find that we joined you guys was back in 2011. And so it's been a long journey and uh, it's been great. I don't know if I'm supposed to say more, but uh, I just, we had some fun webinars that we did together and you guys were so great in being flexible when we, you know, with, with our live binders platform, we get to see all kinds of cool binders. So whenever we see something that a teacher is doing, you know, really great with the students, we would give you guys a call and see if we could get them on. And so we've had a number of of different teachers come on. And uh, so the, the farthest back that I could find was 2011. Uh, and I don't know if you want me to go on, but um, some of the binders that I was going to mention, do you want me to stop or do you want me to keep going? You can keep going, and then we'll go okay. to Pam. Okay. okay. So there was um, teachers from Illinois doing uh, librarians, working on a super team of binders for their Common Core curriculum with the iLead group that came on. There was a teacher in Georgia who was working on this great project, teaching her students about the different perspectives of bullying. So there was the bully binder there. Um, there was a teacher, I think it was in Indiana, who was working with middle school students, and there was a fun, pro I don't know if we had the students on, I think we did, where the students came on and talked about their career um, and how they were using different technologies to explain about the different kinds of work that they could look at in the future. So those are some of the memories that, that I could gather, and I know there's more, um, but I've had a great relationship with all of you, and we even have um, Kim Case and Kim Thomas, who's working with us uh, to this day, and we're really thankful for that. So you guys have been a wonderful enrichment for, for even our team and for our teachers as well. Thank, Thank you. you for being a part of our show, and we love all of the work that Peggy puts into our live binders. Okay, Kim, you're up. Am I on? I'm afraid I'm going to do a Paula, so can somebody make sure that I'm being heard out there? <laughs> All right, thank you. Hearing you great, Kim. Okay, so I um, think I'd ask if I would gather up some of the teachers that I was coaching and do a show. So I went to one teacher, Julie Leckman, of course, she was game for anything, bless her heart, and Ray Dewberry, who I love. Of course, her only concern was using inappropriate language on the show because she does that quite often, but we curtailed her. And then we had Jesse McKinley, a fellow board member, and he was really nervous. So we, we 
got in a Google Doc and we put our stuff together. And I made sure I took a little bit more so they didn't feel so much pressure. Well, I knew something was wrong. Julie, Julie was kind of long because she had really good stuff to share. And Ray got on the mic and it was like, it was the Tonight Show. Um, and so I finally had to give her the, the, you know, it's time to stop. And Jesse, the most nervous one, started talking and talking and talking. And there were four minutes left, and I looked at Jesse, and I said, Jesse, it is my turn. I have not shared. This is another example of the opportunity that this show has provided for teachers to find their voice, to, to realize they have stuff to share. That, that was one of the most inspiring things I've ever been around, to watch two of these three teachers who were hesitant and just got out there and did it. Uh, and then I have one other funny story. Peggy and I were doing something with Discovery Ed, and it was at Halloween. So I said, we're going to dress up. And she said, no, 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 no. Well, I brought over a cape and a hat. And guess what she wore for the show? Thank you. I'm sure that, that was fun. OK, thank you, Kim. Patty, it's your turn. Hi, everybody. Um, I don't remember exactly the year that I started, but it was back with Peggy and Lorna and Kim. And um, I just remember uh, being very timid when I first started. I might be what you call a lurker. And I'd get so much out of the sessions, but I was so afraid to make comments. And little by little, I, uh, I gradually started talking. And when I would sign in, I'd notice a lot of people saying hello to each other and the hosts kind of recognizing the, their, their friends or their regulars. And finally, um, it got to the point where, you know, Peggy started saying, hi, Patty. And I just, I felt like, yeah, I'm one of the gang, you know? And so um, I now, I, I don't know when it's been happening for a couple of years, but they welcome everybody who signs on, even if they're a first timer. And I think that's so wonderful to make everybody feel that they're really an important part of the group. And I always appreciated that. And we appreciate you being a part of our group. All right, uh, Sherry, it's your turn. Sherry's hand went down. OK, maybe Susie. OK, Susie, take it away. Well, I was looking through um, all the shows, and it was hard because I wanted to watch several of them again. and. Uh, just the memories that it brought back, it, but there were a few out of probably hundreds I've seen. Uh, Tech with Tia, Latia Cooper brought such energy to the shows, and there were two, there were some with students, there were two with Sydney Sheeran from New York, and I just remember after listening to students how inspiring that was, and Coco Khalil, I love her name, that was a drill press is a girl's best friend. Those student ones were great. And then in the last few years when I was on the advisory board, I was able to have some of my friends, like especially Edumatch, and I think Sarah is here, some of my friends present. And I was just so proud of them and so glad that I had the chance to, you know, have them present on the show. So it's, it's just been a, a, a great run, and I've learned so much. All right, so now that uh, Sherry's found her talk button, yay, Sherry, press on it and take it away. All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can. OK, great. Well, I didn't realize how long ago I started, but it was back at the beginning. I probably didn't see the first show, but my a show I remember is with um, Buffy Hamilton talking about the instructional widgets. And there was some technical goose at the beginning. But when she came on, it was like, if I'm remembering, this was her. I could be remembering the wrong person, but I'm thinking that. Um, it was early in the morning. She was in her pajamas. Um, it was either her or Sylvia. Uh, Talisano languages. 
And I can remember thinking, these people are teachers just like me, and they're willing to get up and share like a, we are normal, normal people trying to be our best. And it was so inspiring. And so today, I am in my pajamas just to honor that. This morning, 9 o'clock Pacific time, I can get up after a week of uh, working hard in the classroom and then have a place where I can chat with people, see what they're doing, learn from them, and apply it on Monday morning in my classroom. And it's not just fun stuff to do. It's like following the a pedagogy of enhancing and en learning and engaging students in ways that we could never do before. And one of the first ones was uh, the Skype by Wesley Fryer. And I thought, man, you know, these people can do this. I'm going to do it. And I think this Kim Trevs was in that one. And so I found her on Edu Blogs, and somehow, I don't know if we connected on Twitter or what, we said, okay, let's try Skype. So it was our first Skype call together to each other. When I called her, she was in the middle of a, a staff meeting, and her principal, you know, said, go for it. And from there, we developed a whole project connecting her class in Memphis, Tennessee um, to my class in Nespelum, Washington. And we did a PB Works wiki together. And it was just an amazing cultural exchange. And it wouldn't have happened if there weren't classroom live. OK, <laughs> I got to stop now because you have so much to me. <clears throat> OK, let's not start that yet. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Uh, we're all feeling that way, Sherry, and I know that I met you through this platform and that we've had some nice connections over the years. So moving on to open mic question number two. Uh, excuse me, I have to wipe the tear out of my eye so I can read it. Okay. What are some tech tools uh what are some tech tools or strategies that you've learned about by participating in Classroom 2.0 Live? Please share your takeaways. And I'm going to roll things with, I remember one of the first ones I heard about was Edmodo. Um, I believe you had the founder on, um, Jeff O'Hare. And I learned about Edmodo, and I thought, oh, this is going to be a great tool for me to use with my fourth graders because it's such a protected walled garden kind of thing. And then I remember being at an ISTE conference in Philadelphia, and I was walking from the convention center across the street to the market to get lunch, and somebody said to me, hey, Paula, and I turned around, and it was Jeff O'Hara from Edmodo, and I was so thrilled that he recognized me. And I have just one quick story while we're reminiscing of when Peggy and um, Kim Case and I first met. Was it an, um, I think it was ISTE, or was it NEC? I think it was ISTE. And I walked into the um, pre-ISTE celebration that they run, and um, Peggy heard me talking, and she turned around, and she went, Paula Noggle. And I went, oh, my gosh, how did you know it was me? And she goes, well, I recognize your voice from talking on Classroom 2.0 Live. And we hugged it out, and, you know, we're so excited to see each other. So I got to meet my heroes in person. All right, so, Peggy, your hand is up, so please take it away. You have just hit on some of my favorite memories, Paula. It, I'll never get over what it was like to go to ISTE conferences and see people in the breezeways and in the presentations that I had never met, and yet I knew them. And I knew them from meeting them online in our shows and through their own webinars and presentations. And I, they may have had uh, uh, their, their avatars or their icons on those sites. And I recognized them 
both by their avatar and by their voices and would just run up and give each other big hugs. And it's just been such an important part of my life. And that is such a great memory. But there are also, of course, live binders has to be at the top of my list because that's, I learned about live binders for our show when we decided that's the tool we want to use because we had tried many other tools and they kept disappearing. So live binders has been here with us for a very long time and I know we'll be here a long time in the future. So that's the top of my list. But there were other tech tools that I learned about through Classroom 2 Live often uh, invited them to present on our show and then continued to share their resources in our live binders along the way. One of them is Participate, and I know many of you started using Participate from the very beginning. It is such a great tool for connecting and building your PLNs. And you can um, participate in live Twitter chats, but they also allow you to collect awesome resources and share them in collections on Participate. And I'm trying to add all of the links people are sharing to our live binder, so it will be growing a lot after today. But if you haven't started checking out Participate, definitely do that. Two other tools I just want to quickly mention are Flipgrid and HyperDocs, and both of them I learned about on our show. We invited their, their founders, creators to come on and share with us, and they are both such awesome tools to use with your students so that they can become creators and not just uh, consumers of, of various things online as part of their learning. So um, be sure and go back and check out those recordings and all of those resources for Flipgrid, HyperDocs, Participate, and LiveBinders. Oh, so many great memories. All right, Lori, it's your turn to share. Thank you. Thanks, Paula. And speaking of students creating, the tool that I remember, and it stuck with me for quite a while because I used it with teaching, was Scratch. Um, at the time, I was teaching math online, and I knew I'd have more math classes at the end of the year than I had math content with the group I was teaching with. And probably was not coincidence that the Scratch show happened about the time I was trying to figure out what to do at the end of the year. I used Scratch lessons to finish up the school year. And then ever since then, when I was teaching the math classes, I had Scratch in the, in the course year. Just a couple weeks ago, I had an email from a former student. She's now in college. And she graduated from this school. And she wanted to tell me that she had uh, really loved Scratch and that had basically de determined, <laughs> she decided what she, what she wanted to do in life based on Scratch. Um, she even submitted a proposal to the Scratch conference at MIT and presented there. So she wanted to let me know that Scratch really had changed her life, as she told me in her email. And I know you have become a Scratch wizard over the years. And now it's time to hear from one of our founding hosts. Mona, take it away. Hi, everybody. And first of all, I want to say thank you very much for drawing us back to such a wonderful opportunity. It is sad, and I can understand the emotions that are going on this morning. And Peggy, you've got to hear, everybody here, myself, how much you've been a, a director of education for myself and so many people. Uh, without you, poking Steve and, and Kim and I, you wouldn't be here after all this time. So thank you very much to you. I just wanted to go back with a couple of memories 
And one of them is uh, EdTech Talk. And that's where Peggy and I met when we st first learned about webcasting. Matt Montaigne was there. And, and that was the push to, to get us into using technology and webcasting uh, with educators. And I have drifted from the education community in some way. Like coming back into Illuminate this morning and going, I don't know how to get on here. I don't know where the talk button is. This is all foreign. But really, I am a family studies teacher, and I'm now into quilting. So I learn from the webcasting and from yourselves and all the tools we use, YouTube, and I use ScreenFlow. I'm now taking those tools, and I teach quilters how to quilt online. So it may not look like a classroom that you're used to or I was used to, but the tools that I learned in this being a um, host and being a learner have been a phenomenal experience. And so I thank everybody here for still participating and still being involved. And I'm sure you're going to evolve into another forum. I know you won't take all your experiences in a different way. So again, thank you very much. OK, I know you've got Peggy shedding a few tears. All right, let's move on to the next question, which is, how has participating in our webinars enhanced your teaching, your connections, your best practices in the classroom, et cetera? And again, I'll start off by saying my teaching, oh my gosh, I've learned about so many tools. I love our featured teacher presenters because they are, you know, in the trenches doing this day in and day out. And I walked away from every one of those shows with some tips and tricks that I could use in my classroom. Um, my connections, this was my Saturday morning family. Um, Rob is like, you know, um, when we had our meeting the other Tuesday night, and I got offline, and I burst into tears, and he came in the room, and he's like, are you okay? And I went, I will be, but right now I'm a little sad, and I was talking to him, but, and he goes, oh, my gosh, what are you going to do on Saturday morning? He goes, he knows he has to be not online, and he has to be quiet from at least 11 to 12 my time. And like this morning, he got up and he goes, oh, i got to hurry up. He got up late and says, I'm going to hurry up and make breakfast so I'm not in the kitchen making noise while you're online. And he's like, oh, so you're going to have Saturday mornings back. And I said, yeah, it's going to be kind of weird. Because I know when we've been on summer vacation, which is nice to give us all a little break, but I miss everybody. I miss seeing my Saturday morning family online. And that's what I feel about each and every one of you. You are part of my family. So who else would like to share some of their teaching connections, practices, et cetera? Please raise your hand. All right, Carolyn, it's your turn. Well, hi, everybody. I just have to say that it was Classroom 2 Zero Live and the Personal Learning Network that I developed, um, that I uh, became a part of, that really enhanced my teaching, especially my last four years. Uh, I don't even, I've been retired six years, and as somebody else mentioned, I've, I've forgotten so much. But uh, this, the warmth of family, knowing that you could go to any of uh, family members for help, uh, being singled out by Peggy, where she told me, hey, you've been participating in the chat. Why don't you be a featured teacher? And I was scared to death, but it was probably one of the highlights of my life, even though I'm not sure I shared all that much. Um, I just I just have to say that I, I learned so many about so many tools and tried those tools out in the classroom. And um, when I left... In 2012, they did name the lab after me, so I guess I couldn't have done all that. <laughs> so I am just so grateful to everybody, and as you said, it really is family. So thank you, Peggy, and thank you, everybody, for all the years. And uh, I do hope I can get back and look at some, listen to some of those archives. And uh, gee, I'm going to be babysitting in another month. I have a my first grandchild due, so that's my excitement. Thank you. Bye. Well, congratulations on your first grandbaby. And thank you for sharing. And Kim, it's your turn. 
Hey, Carolyn, congrats on your grandchildren. I have four. They're the best thing that ever happened, but they're really nice when you go home because you're exhausted. Um, I was a ed tech coach for 17 years, and during that time, I was fortunate enough to meet Peggy. She was in the Madison School District um, working with the upcoming teachers, and I got to know her, and I started watching her show. As an ed tech coach, you work in absolute isolation when you're one, in a district of eight, you have really nobody to talk to. And Peggy became my mentor, my confidant, my counselor. And it was the web to earn her show that gave me resources that I could take and instantly use with teachers. It was just this incredible resource. In fact, I started using them for PD hours. I would five, five or six of her shows and have the archives. And one time they, they not only watched the show, then they had to send a tweet out or an email directly to the presenter. And Jocelyn Harding, this incredible teacher, still talks about that. So through Peggy, we get to touch lives. And that connection is just so invaluable. The other thing we've talked about with Peggy is her cheerfulness. That voice, that kindness in the morning makes all of us just think we can do anything on a Saturday and we can do anything in our classroom and we can do anything with teachers. And if there's one thing I want to, I want to walk away with is remembering that bubbly voice on Saturday morning. She empowers my soul. She empowers it all. Thank you. So true, Kim, and thank you for sharing that. Um, Kim Case, it's your turn. Thank you, everyone, and I'm so glad to be here and walk down this memory lane with everybody that's been in the chat and been in the session today. I used to get so nervous when we first started the shows and stumble over words and everything, and I've come such a long way, and that's been the help of Lorna and Peggy being being there for me and guiding me and and helping me learn how to to present and be a speaker in Illuminate now Blackboard and I'm just grateful for all that Peggy has done in my life and how much Lorna has been a part of my life when we were doing the shows and it's so sad that it's going to go away but we would spend, like Peggy said, hours on Friday nights on Skype talking about the show. And during the week, we would be chatting back and forth about the upcoming show. And that was just such an important part of my life that I'll never forget these opportunities that I had. And it's opened up many doors for me since then, and I'm very grateful for all of that and for everybody that attended the shows in the past and in the present. So thank you all for joining us and, and listening to us as we found our way. Thank you. And thank you, Kim, for being one of the founders of this awesome platform that we've all enjoyed over the years. We have learned so much. Um, is there anyone who would like to speak on um, this topic or share? You know who's in this audience? I'd love to hear. Oh, wait, did he go away? Is Doug still in the room? Doug, just one time before we leave, I'd love to hear your voice. Can you take the mic? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> if not, I understand. not talking to us. <laughs> okay. So anyhow, um, we've had a wonderful time, and I am, I forgot who I'm turning it over to, but we have a game we're going to play. So um, I forgot who this was. It's, it's me. It's yes, it's okay. me. Yeah, it's me. So if you're, if you're watching this on a mobile device, you might not be able to do both, but if you're on a computer and you have a mobile device, you're welcome if this is just a four-question quiz is. And quizzes, if you're not familiar with it, is kind of like Kahoot, but there are some differences. And I, I love using this in my library. So I will give you a minute, and I'll talk with your, you just need to go to joinquizzes.com. 
And if you're not able to, um, I'm going to show you the questions on the screen anyway. So I went back through some of the stats and some of the, uh, the archives of Classroom 2.0 Live, and I thought it was kind of interesting some of the things that I found. So I will give you just a second, and then I will move on, see if anybody's been able to join. Oh, I see Paula, Patty, Peggy, Eileen. I feel like romper room. And I see with my magic mirror, there's Sherry, Lori, Melissa, Lorna, Tammy, Kim. Oh, wow, we got a good crew. Peggy, too. Peggy was in before it attested for me. Okay, I'm going to go on just so that we, I'm going to click start, and you will answer these questions. You can answer them at, you, at your own pace. Okay, it looks like everybody's answered. And the first question was about if you look at the archives, and this is important, how many different search terms are there? There are 771 different search terms. So on the page, that is one way that you can look for things. And moving on. And if you're not playing, I'm just going to go ahead and show these next questions. When I went through and I looked at the titles of the programs, there was one word that was clearly the winner, and that was teacher. And that kind of brings to mind the importance of our featured teachers. And I used the program WordArt. And um, I love WordArt. I think there's a, a paid version, but I've never needed to use it. I could input the words from the titles, and you have a choice of many, many different types of uh, formats. You can even import a picture and have the words fill it. Um, it's a lot of fun to, to use. And then the next question was, other than Steve Hargadon and the advisory moderator members, who presented the most times? It was Shelley Terrell. And there were many people who have presented at least three times. It was amazing. You've mentioned some of them. Steve is the overall winner with 11 times. Kim Case has seven. Paula is at least seven, but really more. Wes Fryer had many. Tammy did. Lorna did. But I thought we should honor them. And then, in honor of live binders, I thought this was so cool. Oh, and that's a word art with our presenters. You can see we've had a lot named Matt and Kim and Karen. And the live binder has over 383,000 hits. So I thought that was fabulous. And that will continue. And this is what the dashboard looks like at the end. I know we're, I don't want to take any more time. I will tell you our winner of today's game was Sherry. And I will pass it on to the next person. All right. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I got to turn off the quizzes. It's running on my phone. Hold on. Okay, get out. Get out. Thank you. Okay, that was fun. Thank you so much for doing that with us, Sherry. But I missed a bunch of them. Anyhow, do you have any favorite aha moments from one of the webinars you've attended? Please share it with us. And I'm just going to say that my aha moment was, um, like I said <laughs> at the beginning, was remembering to push the talk button when it was my turn to present. I know Peggy laughs at me because 
I'm okay on the presenting side of this, but I still don't feel comfortable enough with this platform to um, act as a host and run all the different pieces and parts. I'm so glad that Lori does that for us and that Tammy's back there doing our closed captioning because I'm just having trouble staying on the front part of it. So anyhow, who has a great aha moment to share with us? We'd love to hear from some people in our audience who have not taken the mic. So if you are, come on, it's the last chance, come on. I know you can raise your hand and just share a little something with us. Yay, Eileen, take it away. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. You, you sound great. Okay, very good. Thank you. It's been such a wonderful experience. And yes, every Saturday I look forward to meeting all of you online. And uh, I guess the aha moment was when Paul and I connected uh, to Skype with our fourth grade classrooms. And that was just wonderful. And my students bring it up all the time. Uh, enjoyed it so much. And uh, I do think that so many of the presenters inspired me over the years. Uh, book creator, I use all the time now. Voice thread, uh, Scratch, Math Playground. Uh, I was just always so excited to learn new things and take it back to my classroom uh, on Monday. So I want to thank all of you. I know I hear all the hard work that you have put into these shows. And I was always sad when summer came and we took a break, but I know that you needed that break. But uh, you've inspired me so much. And I have, you know, shared so many of these resources with my teachers. So I just want to say thank you, and I hope that I still am able to see you online in other venues. So thanks so much. Eileen, thank you. I'd forgotten that we'd connected uh, our two classes. What, do you remember what year that was? Um, that was, I always loved doing that. Uh, two years ago, we connected. Okay, great. And hopefully we can do it again this year. Oh, thank um, you, yes. I know that I have uh, connected with a lot of people. I remember Peggy talking um, myself. And my, I had a Skype buddy one year when I first started venturing, dipping my toes into collaborations. I found um, Jan Wells, who was at the time a fourth grade teacher in Kansas. She is now retired. But Jan Wells and I met on a name that was being run by Jennifer Wagner of Projects by Jen. And um, it was over the summer, very close to when we were both starting back to school, that we met each other on the Ning. And we started chatting. And I said, you know, I'd love to do some kind of collaboration, um, maybe once a month with another class. It would be so much fun to try. So because of that, Jan and I became Skype buddies. And we did it once a month. And our first Skype call, and I think that was because of uh, Sylvia Talazano's um, mystery Skype presentation. And the first time we did it, we had some te technical difficulties. So all our kids did was go um, sit in what we called the hot seat, the seat in front of the webcam with the mic. And they just had to say, hi, my name is. And something that is unique, is unique about me is blah, 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 blah. And they were so nervous about saying their one sentence that probably 90% of them had it written on a note card, but it was fine. That was our first month um, connection. Then the next month we did, um, we read the book, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. We took turns reading the pages uh, chorally to each other. We made, uh, we did um, The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere and created a voice thread with both of our classes. And then we did a presentation for, ah, I forgot the name of the program. Um, tell you, what was it called, the one that Wes and you uh, ran? So we had to make a video, a 15, 20 minute video, which was really my first foray into that. And, you know, with, she's in Kansas, I'm in Louisiana. Yes, K-12 online conference. So after Peggy heard that, she invited Jan and I to present on this program. I'd already been attending the shows as a, you know, audience member, but it was my first time to present. 
and it was so nerve wracking. And I think I forgot to forward the slides and do things like that. But um, thanks to that collaboration, it has led to a lot of other collaborations. Um, it got me into, you know, going to ISTE and presenting there, presenting at my state conference, presenting virtually, writing a book with um, Jerry Blo um, Blumengarten and uh, Billy Krakauer. And just a lot of different opportunities have come my way because of my dipping my toes into this webinar program nine and a half years ago. So I will always, always be so thankful. So anybody else want to take the mic? Still waiting to hear Doug's voice. All right, so no one else wants to talk about that one. Okay, have you or will you include the webinar archives in any um, of your presentations, whether it's a face-to-face uh, -face session, a virtual webinar, or maybe at EdCamp? I know that I every time I attend a web, an ed camp, I definitely have this as one of the most used tools. Please share it uh, widely with everyone that you teach with. Um, any teachers that you know and the archives and the live binders are going to be around forever, hopefully. And Peggy, it is your turn. I love this question. There are so many places I've been able to share these webinars. And I've especially shared them at EdCamp Phoenix and also at our ASTI uh, conferences, which only one year was virtual and all the rest were face to face. But it was, it was just a perfect opportunity to kind of help people get introduced to the idea of building a professional learning network, finding resources that they could use in their classrooms every single day, and um, how to use slide binders. Uh, in almost every time that I shared our shows, it was the first time people had heard about live binders. And there were times when even uh, Tina and uh, Barbara from live binders would jump in on Skype and talk to the participants in the session. So those were all great opportunities to share. And I'm so happy I was able to do that. And that was an awesome presentation. Um, yeah, I just put a thing in the chat room about everybody putting their Twitter handle in. I think I follow almost everybody here, but if not, I'll make a point of doing that so that we can continue to stay connected um, online. Um, I want to always be part of my Saturday family's PLN. And I always laugh because my initials are PLN. <laughs> but that, it just happened to work out that way. OK, so um, Susie, Tammy, anybody else want to talk about this one? If not, we'll move on to the next one. What free webinars, online PD opportunities, virtual conferences can you recommend to others to take part in? We're going away, but there are many other great ones out there. And Peggy, it is your turn. I am only going to say just a few words because I want someone else to share this particular resource. As many of you know, I've been an active uh, part of the EdWeb community I think almost since the beginning. And it is the most fabulous place to connect with other educators, get current, relevant um, information in their free webinars. They offer their recordings. I'm not going to say any more than that. But I want Lisa Schmucky to get on the mic and tell us about it firsthand <laughs> because she's been on our show. She's been an avid Classroom 2.0 Live um, supporter from the beginning, and we are so grateful to her. Peggy, I, I'm so grateful to you. Uh, I, um, 
You know, I, I, I'm on East Coast time. So I was thinking about your session today, and I was kind of sitting on my porch. It's a beautiful day here. And I was catching up on uh, some Education Weeks and some New York Times articles. And um, there was one that I was reading about how much money the Gates Foundation has put into uh, trying to develop a teacher effectiveness program. Okay, so over the past four years, they've poured $212 million into these programs. And I was thinking they should just give the money to you. <laughs> because I think that what you've done for all, and what you continue to do in every community and environment that you're in is, is to show everyone how by coming into virtual worlds and helping each other, that's how we make teachers more effective and have an impact on students. So um, I don't know the answer. We, we need to clone you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you've attended 834 live webinars on EdWeb. And, and then the other thing that I read was, you know, you're all reading what's happening with Facebook and all these other big social networks these days. and how they're being taken over by so much neg negativity. And we've been so fortunate to not have that. I always cross my fingers and knock wood or whatever that, that we continue to have such a positive environment within EdWeb. But one article I was reaching, re reading about is how the communication in these networks establishes sort of what the norms are for communication. And you're in almost every one of our webinars welcoming people, like what, what everyone's talked about here, welcoming people, being supportive, being cheerful, not on a mic, but in, you know, in the way you post. And I think that's been such a part of establishing, and I think, I think educators are so generous and helpful with each other anyway, and you totally um, represent that, and that cre can create a community that has a different tone to it. So um, I hope everybody here will join EdWeb if you're not already a member. I think a number of you already are, and all of our programs are free. And Peggy, we're going to talk this week because I think there's some other ideas that we can pursue to keep the same Classroom 2.0 um, you know, feeling going in other worlds. Uh, thank you so much, Lisa, for talking about EdWeb. I am a member, and I have attended some webinars, but of course, this has always been my baby on this platform. I know. So I will be attending a lot more of them, and I am excited to become a more active member of the EdWeb community. Peggy? Well, that would be great. Let's talk to Paula. And, you know, it's really EdWeb is in, this is our 10th anniversary. And um, beginning this past year, we've gotten state approval from like half a dozen states. So our certificates can be used for teacher relicensure in those states. And um, I, I must say it's been the greatest um, thing. I'm so grateful in my life that we've been able to do something that helps teachers as, as much as it does. It really means a lot. Thank you. OK, Peggy, your turn. Just a couple more things I'd like to mention, uh, because all of these people have been on our shows one time or another. EduMatch is a great place to connect with other educators, and they often have interviews and panel conversations that you can tune into. Everything is free, and I've put these links in our live binder. Also, Pass the Scope EDU was awesome for helping us capture presentations at ISTE for the last couple of years, and they have their videos available at um, through Periscope, and it's a great place to connect up. And you don't have to be there live. You can watch them as a recording. And then Steve Hargadon has tons of virtual conferences over the years. He's done so many of them. Certainly the Global Ed Conference every year, the Library 2.0 Conference. He had a student tech conference, a digital citizenship 
conference, and all of these conferences are available on the Learning Revolution. So if you go to that site and you click on the conferences link, you'll find all the past recordings and announcements of upcoming um, conferences. They have one coming up in September called EdTech World, and it's just formulating. You could uh, volunteer to be a presenter or just an attendee and a participant, and that link is in the live binder. So check that out because that will be another great place to connect. So those are just a few more ideas I could share. Thank you for all those, Peggy. We will be looking in the live binders on how to connect. I know that as a Twitter user, I find out about a lot of uh, virtual opportunities through Twitter. Um, state conferences will sometimes live stream out. Even ISTE does some live streaming. So if you can't be there in person, sometimes you can connect online. There were a lot of nice summits that went on this summer. Um, and it was fun to be part of those. And of course, we're all about free. If you're a Seesaw user, Seesaw does their PD in your PJs. They have a calendar that comes out of each month. They're very short. Some of them are only 10 minutes long. They're not too interactive, but they give you some great ideas on how to use that tip, uh, that tool. They give you some great tips. Um, I did the Book Creator um, series this summer, and those are on their YouTube channel. Um, there are lots of different ways to connect and to learn and to keep learning, and I think everyone in this room is an excellent example of what it is to be a lifelong learner. We want our students to be that, and the best way we can do that is to be one ourselves. So. I think unless there's anyone else who would like to take the mic and bid us adieu, we are going to do our wrap. Last chance. Anybody else want to take the mic? Okay. Peggy, are you going to do the wrap or is Laura, Lori or who? I'll go ahead and take the mic, Paula. Thank you, and Lori. Peggy. As Peggy mentioned, the Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your webinar, host your own webinar where you can sign up for a collaborate session. As, and as long as it's open to the public, it's free. The archives for the recordings for Classroom 2.0 Live are on YouTube, as well as iTunes U. As you exit the session, the survey should open up in your browser. And at the bottom, you can request a professional development certificate. And please make sure you put a personal email address in for this, or not. <laughs> I would just like to jump in, Lori, for just a second to say thanks to our laugh. amazing uh, creator of these certificates. Patty Ruffing has agreed to continue providing certificates for all of you for uh, webinar recordings that you watch. And you just have to submit that certificate form. And she's going to do it all the way through this school year. So maybe when you have a break over Christmas break or spring break, anytime you have a chance and want to go in and watch a webinar and would like to have a PD certificate, just fill in that form and you'll be able to get it all the way through the end of the school year. Thanks, Peggy, for jumping in. And again, use the personal email address to request this. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. So again, as you exit this survey link should open in your browser. You can take it from the chat or from within the live binder. Special thanks to all of our special guests, to everybody in the session, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>